So the last few years I've spent way too much time watching gaming setup and room tour videos on YouTube as well as endlessly scrolling through Reddit looking at some of the most incredible battle stations people have put together and really just dreaming of the day which has finally arrived that I might be in a position to create something special myself. Now to kick things off I of course needed to find some area in my house where I could start setting things up and using an open space like this did make me a little bit nervous because traditionally you're going to want to use a corner area for better aesthetics but the way my downstairs is laid out with windows, doors, and closets this was really my only option. Now the first thing I did was pick up a few items from Ikea. I ended up going with one of their wall shelf units, two of their floating shelves, and one Kallax 4 cubby display. This was my first experience with Ikea products and I can see why people like them. They're super easy to put together and the quality exceeded my expectations when compared to their low cost. And as always, I'll try to leave links in the description for everything I end up using in this video, but let me know if I do end up missing anything so I can go back and update. Once they were all assembled, it was time to hang things. I'll be putting the shelf unit on the left hand side about 8 inches off the ground. Next, I'll be installing the floating shelves to the right at staggered heights. Now as far as the desk, I went with the heavy duty L-shaped sit stand option from Fazebo. And in a video I released just a couple months ago, I went over how to easily add some amazing custom LED lights to the perimeter and frame. I also made sure that after everything was set up, cable management would be on point and there'd be no visible wires hanging down. I was absolutely blown away by the response to this mod, and currently the video has over 360,000 views, so make sure to check it out if you're interested in the complete step-by-step -step process. And for the cubby, since I'm not entirely sure where I want them yet, I'll just keep it off to the side until I find a good spot. So right now, I have what I would consider to be the skeleton of what will be our end result. You can begin to see things taking form, but we're still very far away from being complete. Now the one thing I did go back and change from the original desk video is that I used a larger power strip. I wanted to get one that provided better protection in case of surges, since I will end up having some expensive equipment plugged in. So I think the most important part of any setup is going to be the PC itself, and I've seen some of the biggest gaming YouTubers out there such as TechSource and Matty K talk about light gaming PCs, so they're the first place I reached out to and they agreed to send me one of their heavy hitters for this video. Now a few things I like about light gaming is that they list all the prices for each component of the build. This means if you're the type that wants to then go out and see how much you could build it for, you can figure out exactly how much money you'd be saving by doing it yourself to determine if spending the extra money is worth the convenience of clicking order and simply plugging things in when it arrives. And for added peace of mind, all their PCs can be returned for free within 30 days if you're not completely satisfied for a full refund, as well as taking care of you if there happens to be any other issues. I'll leave a link in the description so make sure to check them out if you're in the market for a gaming PC as prices start out at $7.99 for a full build. Now as I'm getting things unpacked, you're going to have to go through two layers of boxes, all surrounded by bubble wrap, before you get to the main event. Then there's still the internal packaging that has to be removed before you can behold the beauty. And let me tell you, Light Gaming absolutely crushed it with this build. I was very specific with them on what I was looking for in terms of performance and looks, and they were able to deliver on both fronts. And this will absolutely fit perfectly with my all-white theme, but most importantly, it'll be able to run any game I want at max settings without even breaking a sweat. The next big ticket item on the list is going to be a monitor, and I ended up going with the Alienware 3423DW, which in my opinion is still the best monitor on the market for gaming, and since my desk isn't massive, this 34 inch curved OLED panel should be the perfect size for my space. Getting this set up was an absolute breeze, and everything could be done by hand with no tools. The stand that it comes with snaps into place, and within 5 minutes it was already assembled. Moving on to the keyboard, and I went with the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro. This has to be one of the best looking keyboards out there, and will go perfectly with my all white theme. And I also stuck with Razer for the mouse, settling on the V3 Pro. I do have pretty big hands, and after trying a few different styles out, this one by far felt the most comfortable. And to set these peripherals on, I went with this 32 by 12 inch minimalistic pad with the non-slip base. Nothing too fancy about this, but I just really liked the way it looked. I also picked up the Elgato Stream Deck MK.2, and you really can't go wrong with one of these since you can customize them to pretty much work with anything you need. And for controllers, I went back and forth between the Xbox Elite and PS5 DualSense Edge, but ultimately I went with the Elite since it was a little bit cheaper, and overall I just love the way it looks. 
Now once I had things set up on the table, at least for me, the legs on the monitor are taking up way too much real estate, so I ordered an arm to free up some space for a much cleaner look. I ended up going with the mount from Vivo that supports ultra-wide monitors up to 49 inches and 33 pounds. And since I do have the LED lights going around the outside of the desk, I made sure this had the option to install things using a grommet system instead of the typical clamp style you would normally see. I'll need to first drill a small hole through my desk and then secure the base to the surface by using a large screw and a metal faceplate underneath. Then there's going to be two separate arm extension pieces that will slide into the post on the base unit. Next I'll have to take my monitor and remove the stand from the back that I installed earlier and replace it with the included Visa attachment. I'll then take the Visa adapter that came with the mounting system and secure them together using the screws that also came with the monitor. Now I think the easiest way is to remove the now attached adapter and transfer it to the arm mount that we just set up so that I can then bring the monitor over to snap it in place. I can then adjust the tension of the spring to make sure it supports the weight of the monitor while still being able to move it around freely. So for many people, I'm sure this wouldn't be a big deal, but I'm not digging how noticeable these black wires are coming from the monitor, as well as the cables plugged into the back of the PC. To help things blend in, I'll be using some white mesh wrap. This is about as simple of a solution as you can get, and for sure cleans things up to the point where your eyes are not automatically drawn to the cords. So if it's not clear from a lot of the videos on my channel, I really do enjoy creating unique environments using LED lights. My idea for this setup is to put some accent lighting around the floating shelves plus the wall unit on the left. I'll be using the same aluminum profiles and same SK6812 pixels that I installed on the desk so everything should be able to sync and play nice together. Now you could certainly use a hand saw, but I'll just be using the regular blade on my miter saw to make all the angled cuts as well as cutting them down to size to fit. And as far as getting these attached to the wall, you certainly could use the mounting brackets that these channels come with, but I pretty much only use these 3M sticky pads now since they can easily be removed with no repair work needing to be done after. So this whole process of putting up the channels and installing the lights was by far the most time consuming part of the project. Right now I'm putting the LEDs in the profile starting at the top right and making my way around going clockwise while making the controversial 90 degree bend. Now I did solder my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the beginning of the strip and if you're curious to learn a little bit more about that process I made a how to solder video that goes over everything you need to know with extreme close up footage and detailed commentary that I highly recommend you checking out if interested. So I picked up some very small raceway tracks to try hiding the cords that are hanging down from the LED strips. I used the same 3M removable wall tape to secure everything down. Now one thing that I'm trying to accomplish is for this to end up looking great not only at night but also during the day. Cable concealers traditionally are fine for me but after seeing how they look in daylight right here in which they're hiding the long wires that'll provide power, ground, and data to the lights, I personally think this looks horrible. So as much as I hate the extra work, I'm going to have to feed the wires behind the wall and down to the floor. But before tackling that, I'll finish up the shelf unit on the left. Now to run the wires behind the wall, I picked up a product from Magnapol, which basically allows you to use a very strong magnet to guide a leader with your cables attached from one spot to the next. I'm for sure going to be holding onto this item for future projects, but thankfully I didn't even need to use it. The other side of this wall actually butts up to my utility closet, and after going around to check, there was no insulation or fire blocks on the other side, and all I had to do was drop the wires in the small hole, go back around, pull them down, and then push them through the bottom. And to conceal the top openings, I'm just going to use a couple wall plugs that you can get in different sizes. So after doing both sections, it really is a night and day difference, and I'm super glad I took the extra time to do it. Moving on to another important piece, which is the chair, and I went with this brand new ergonomic offering from Sihu that comes in a white or black option. And I actually first heard about this product when reading a Forbes article where they called it an affordable alternative to a $700 Herman Miller chair. Getting this put together was about as easy as it could possibly get. Instructions were very clear and everything you need for assembly is included. Now I've had this for a couple weeks and I can confidently say this is the most comfortable chair I've ever used. The lumbar support is somehow able to adjust on its own depending on how you're sitting so it's always in contact with your back. So definitely check these guys out if you're in the market for something new. Next, I needed to find something to give the back wall some added texture, and I really do love the way these type of 3D panels look, and I'm sure it would have turned out great, but I wanted to go with something not quite as common since you do see these in so many setups today. I ended up going with this really cool dragon scale 3D type product that I saw Edgar from TechSource use in a recent video which I thought looked amazing. 
You basically have these black pieces that you can arrange in any combination of ways that you'd like to make a design, and then these scale looking things just snap in place. You can use some small screws to secure these to the wall, but since they are so light, I'll again just be using some sticky pads. And once you're happy with the design, you can go ahead and start snapping the 3D scales in place. So I do get a lot of questions about how I conceal wires, a controller, and power supply, so I thought I'd include one way you can go about doing this if you don't have something in your room to hide everything behind. So these wires that you're looking at are the ones I put through the wall that run up to the floating shelves. I'm going to use some basic cable concealer to run the wires through, and next I found this great bathroom decor box that has plenty of ventilation which will work great for housing the ESP32 controller with WLED installed, as well as our power supply. And this does a perfect job of making what would normally be an eyesore something that blends in much better. It's not a perfect solution, but unless you want to go through the work of putting everything behind sheetrock and then patching everything back up, this is about as good as it's going to get. Now in a previous video I did go over this exact same process, so feel free to check that out if you're interested since I do go over things in a little bit more detail. For the other side I'm going to simplify things and use an awesome plug and play controller from Domestic Automation that comes with WLED pre-installed. This white one I have here is specifically built for the SK6812 LEDs that I'm using in this build. Now they also include this great little mounting track that I'll stick to the bottom of the shelf. Then all I have to do is plug in my power and then use some cable concealer as well as some white mesh wrap to help things blend in as best as possible. And if you are curious to learn a little bit more about these plug and play controllers from Domestic Automation and other button and motion sensor attachments that they offer, I highly recommend checking out a couple videos I did recently going over this product in much more detail. So one of the last things to do, which will never truly be done, is to go ahead and add some decor to match your current style and interests. This is something that could go in so many different directions depending on what you like, but for me personally, I'm going to go for a clean, futuristic, minimal garden vibe, if that's even a thing. I also still need to order a nice pair of white speakers and would love to hear some suggestions if anyone has recommendations. Now as I continue to set things up, I have to say that this was by far the most fun I've had on any project I've done up until now, and I really hope if there's anyone out there who, like me, has always been dreaming of doing something like this, that you'll be inspired like I was by so many others to try turning your vision into reality. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos.